What's up everyone? Kate here from Rugby Tennis. Hope you guys are doing great today. Are you guys on the hunt for a new head MP racket? Well, if that is the case, stay around and watch this video. Whether you're a beginner player that's looking to buy a new MP racket or maybe even a more experienced player that has played for a number of years, this video has it all for you. We're breaking down all of the head MP rackets to show you guys which one is best for you. So what I've done is I compiled all my reviews together in this, this video and I am going to be showing you what your next new head MP racket will be. And as you guys know, I've tested all of these rackets, so I'm not just making stuff up. You guys know that I have tested all of these rackets because I have reviewed all of them. So make sure you're listening closely to which ones are gonna fit you best. So there's gonna be some rackets in here that are you know, super spin oriented or very power oriented or more control oriented, maybe more so for beginners, advanced, etc. So be careful that you're, you know, in your head, what are you looking for? Because I'm gonna run down all of these rackets here. But that's not all guys, you're gonna be able to see how these rackets perform under pressure and in stressful situations because like I said, I reviewed all of them in the last year. So I've compiled all of that so you'll be able to see what it looks like when I hit with these rackets as well. So like I said, if you're really looking to buy a new head MP racket, there's many of them in the head lineup. Please stay and watch this full video as you will be able to hopefully make a good decision for yourself and your game. And of course guys, do not forget to like and subscribe, hit the bell, do all those important things that I want you guys to do. It really helps us. Also use the affiliate links in the description. It really helps us a lot. And if you're really enjoying the MP Tennis content, you can also use Super Thanks as well. talking about a racket and that is the head gravity MP so let's jump into it the head gravity this is honestly probably the nicest racket I've ever looked at in my life as far as cosmetics go this is a beauty of a racket let me tell you that um, if I was like a uh, top 10 pro and I was getting pro stocks made I'd want this paint job on all my rackets, let's just say that. But honestly, was really looking forward to this play test. For starters, this racket comes in at like uh, 295, the MP version. Note that a while ago, I tested the Gravity Pro, the old version. So if you wanna check that out, uh, definitely do. Uh, but this is the MP, so it comes in pretty, pretty light, 295 stock form. So I knew that I was going to need to add some weight uh, because the racket that I play right now comes in at 338 with all my lead and string and all the stuff added to that. So I knew I was going to have to bring it up. So what I did was I was uh, I put pretty a, a pretty good chunk of weight. I don't know if you guys can see at three and nine. Um, and also countered it in the grip. So I was able to bring it up to, uh, with string and the weight to my spec 338. And I was able to get out on court uh, and test it. So the string that's in here is my string, Solinka Confidential, got the Wilson overgrip, all that stuff is what I like. So got on court with it. What did I think of it? Um, at first, I actually did test it with a hybrid string, just kind of rallying down the middle with my dad. And I really liked it. I was like, dang, like this is gonna feel good. It's in my wheelhouse. I think I'm gonna like this. And it made me think of another racket I've play tested and really, really liked, but couldn't switch to because of elbow pain. And that is the Wilson Shift. That racket also has a 16 by 20 string pattern, which was interesting. So anyway, got on court put my string in it. If we go and start from the back, 
On forehands, when you connect well with this racket, especially if you're a more advanced player and add some weight to it, you can label it, it's really good. You can put some good spin on it. I could kind of do whatever I wanted. Um, it really penetrates the court actually when you really rip it. That's something that I'm kind of looking for in a little bit of a racket right now. I find with my Extreme Tour, I have a beautiful rally ball, but sometimes when I want to really penetrate the court, uh, I have a little bit of, a, little bit of um, a harder time. I can do it, but I feel like there's other rackets out there that would be able to maybe help me. So there's that. Um, I really did enjoy it on my forehand. I didn't really feel like the racket was you know, too heavy or too light or uh, unstable or anything like that. It was pretty solid on my forehand. I would probably give it an A+, plus, just as good as my Extreme Tour, maybe a little bit better. On the back inside though is when I kind of started to notice a couple issues and I was ticked off because this is a 100 square inch racket and I felt like I really had to hit the sweet spot though, which is strange because the, the way this head shape is, is it's like, it kind of reminds me of a Yonix frame because I feel like it's like wider this way. Um, so I, I don't know what they're, what this, this head shape is very unique, but I felt like I wasn't connecting in the middle of the strings or it didn't feel like I was as well as like other rackets or my personal racket. So I felt like the ball was flying sometimes and I didn't have the control over it that I wanted to, especially when I was hitting you know, some flatter shots or some backhands where I had to prep early uh, or really early and kind of take it on the rise or some pickup backhands. Guys, in order for me to switch to a racket, it all needs to be, needs to be good. So I'm getting pretty nitpicky here. Overall, on the back end, it was good, but I just feel like it wasn't good enough to, to make me switch. Um, but I mean, overall, I'd give it honestly a, a B plus, B plus, A minus, probably a B plus though, um, just because I felt like it had, it felt good on some shots, and then on some shots, it really didn't feel good at all, and I didn't have that feeling of uh, connected to the racket. So that's back end. If we're talking about the slice, um, that's another area where I really struggled with this racket. I felt like I was getting some nice spin and it was going over the net with some nice, uh, like not high over the net, like perfect, um, what do you call it? Um, perfect, like it was in the perfect window, like we say window one uh, for slice and stuff and it was going right where I wanted to, but it was landing short. So I felt like I had to like really work to get my slice deep, which is not normally an issue with me with my Extreme Tour or other rackets I've demoed. Um, and I felt like it was kind of just awkward. Once again, I don't know if it's that, that, that head shape that this racket has um, that was causing me that it, those issues, but just a little bit of a struggle there. I really didn't like the slice on this racket actually, probably would give it um, a a B minus, a C plus. So that's an area that I really uh, struggled with. But that's the backhand, uh, you know, kind of wrapping up over there. Approaching to the net, pretty solid. Volleys are a beauty with this racket. If you guys watched my um, Gravity Pro review in the fall, last fall, I loved it on volleys. This racket's kind of a beast at, vo at volleys. Uh, I feel like I can't miss, uh, and I think that is a good thing about this head size. It's pretty pretty stable up at the net. It's, it's a bigger head size. Um, had some nice touch with it as well. So really no issues at all. Probably give it an A, A plus. Overheads, uh, totally fine, no issues. Like I say in all my racket reviews, I think if you know how to hit an overhead, I don't think you can really mess up. Um, but yeah, A plus on the overhead, we'll say. Now, I want to talk about something before I get into serve and return. When it comes to the maneuverability of this racket, it's unique. It's a little bit different, um, especially where this comes in at a lighter stock weight. I feel like it could still cause problems for people um, on the maneuverability side because of the way this head shape is. I'm talking a lot about the head shape, but I think you kind of need to because it's just an awkward feeling sometimes when it swings through the air. It's not a traditional um, shape. So I felt like at times, and maybe that's why I did have some problems on my back end picking up 
uh, little half volleys or pickups from the baseline because it was tough to maneuver from the forehand to the backhand. But that's just something I wanted to mention as well. So that's didn't really love the maneuverability of this racket and that's a big con that I had with the Gravity Pro in the fall probably even more than this one because it was the pro model and when I even made contact with the ball it's an 1820 string pattern didn't feel like I was getting much on the ball etc but that's the gravity pro go watch that video if you would like to but going back you know hitting some serves and returns serve was average it was just okay once again I kind of felt the maneuverability uh, coming into play in a bad way when it was coming overhead um, I felt like I wasn't able to be as crafty on the serve, you know, hit a slower kick serve, but with a lot of spin or go really slice wide. Um, I didn't really feel like I had that. This racket didn't really have that in its, I don't know what the word is, in its tool, tool bag, toolbox. Like I felt like this racket was not able to do what I'm able to do with some rackets on the serve, being creative with spin, power, angle, etc. Not to say that it was bad, it was solid on the flat serve. I could crank out some big ones there, but I still think it was not as strong as I was hoping it to be. So serve, I would, I would give it a B plus. Returns were also pretty average. When you connect with it, it felt pretty good. Similar to the Gravity Pro, I really liked it on returns. Um, I think if you time it well, especially with this head shape, this I feel like this head shape and size and the way it is, it has some pros and cons. It's really good for some things, but not good at all for some things. Uh, so when I made contact, uh, hitting you know blocking topspin return, it was solid, but didn't really love it on uh, you know some chip returns and stuff. Didn't feel great there. Uh, the overall feeling of the racket was. You know, pretty average. It has that head feel, which I like, but in some departments, I didn't really love it, you know, on the backhand and stuff and slicing. So, but to back it up, to get to returns, I would also give returns probably a B plus. So I guess that's gonna kind of wrap it up. Really solid frame. I think if you are somebody that, you know, played with the Speed Pro, that maybe wants to try gravity, you're an advanced player, you wanna customize a racket. This is a racket that you, it's a pretty good platform racket that you can customize. Maybe you're somebody that uses a Yonix racket as well. Uh, if you're somebody that uses a Yonix racket, I don't think this head shape would bother you as much because you know Yonix frames have the isometric head. Also, if you're coming from a pure arrow, pure drive, somebody that's in that 100 square inch uh, kind of bracket. I don't think this will bother you as much. When you're somebody that's coming from a smaller head size up, you will notice it. So, you know, 95, 97, 98 square inch rackets, you're going to notice it a bit. And that's why I think I did as well. The Speed MP. Originally, I tested this out uh, stock form and I thought it was a little bit too light. So I added a little bit of lead at three and nine and then some in the butt. And it felt a lot better. So that's one thing for you guys to know. If you feel like you like the racket, but you still want to give it a chance, throw some lead on there and see what happens. That's what happened when I got this racket. I actually really didn't like it stock form. And then I was getting ready to send it back and I put lead on it and it changed my tennis life because I love that racket dearly. Um, but yeah, Speed MP. Uh, compared to this racket, the Speed Pro, the Speed MP, I felt, was much easier to hit more length, and it was much easier to hit topspin. Uh, and that is because of the 16 by 19 pattern, I can guarantee you. I thought it was a little bit more maneuverable through the air, which is something important for me and for a lot of players. Um, and if I had to choose one, I would definitely be going with the Speed MP, just because I felt like it fit my game more, just because I like to hit height sometimes. I'm not really a flat hitter. If I was a flat hitter, then I would probably like the Speed Pro more because it's an 18 by 20. Uh, but yeah, forehands, backhands, solid. Um, the, probably the same solid as the Speed Pro, but I was only able to get more length and more spin and the trajectory was better. So that's why I like this one more. With that being said, the trajectory and the spin potential and the launch angle wasn't as good as this uh, Extreme Tour, and that's just my opinion, but I didn't like 
it as much as that racket, but it was substantially better than the Speed Pro. So, forehands, backhands, good. Slice was nice. Volleys were average. Um, overheads were good. Same thing on serve. I thought I was able to hit my spots well with this one, but not not able to get the same power and spin potential, which is actually funny because this one is 100 square inches and it's 16 by 19, where this one is 98 square inches and 16 by 19, but it's also a spin frame and has like spin grommets, so maybe that has something to do with it. But yeah, I mean, overall, if we're comparing uh, oh, one more thing. This one didn't the Speed MP. I did not like it on return as much as the Speed Pro. But overall, solid rackets. The paint job is very nice. Um, they feel nice in your hand. Like the Speed MP. Like once I added weight, it felt really nice moving through the air. Um, but I just I couldn't switch to it. The the sound, the feel of the racket. That's what something was. Uh, I thought that was missing a bit. Um, and yeah, I mean, there's not really much to add. They're great frames. We got a rack of review for you guys today, and that racket is the Head Extreme MP2023 Auxetic Edition Racket, whatever you want to call it. But jumping to the racket for today. Now, it's kind of funny this one. I wasn't planning on really demoing it at all because I really have no intentions to switch to a racket like this. But this is the racket of choice for my dad and also my sister. They also use the Extreme MP and they wanted me to try it, but also, of course, I'm gonna tell you guys what I think about it as well. So, very interesting frame. It's definitely in the realm of power and spin, which is kind of a no-brainer for the Extreme line, but need to make sure I tell you guys that. I strung it up today uh, for, for, the, for you guys with uh, Head Hawk Power. So that's a string that has just come out I am lucky that I have had some access to it because Head sent me, or didn't send me, sent the school some to try out. So that's what I threw in here. And it is at 24 and 23 kilos. And the reason why I say kilos, because normally I do pounds, is because I actually strung this up for somebody else to play test as well and I put their attention in it. But 24 and 23 kilos is actually pretty close to what I'm using anyway, so it shouldn't be that big of a difference anyway. But how does this racket play? I'm gonna tell you guys. So it is like a brother or a sister, if you know what I mean, to the Head Extreme Tour line, which you guys should be very familiar with if you're watching the channel because that racket is talked about in unstop on, on this channel. So. I consider it a brother or a sister because it's almost like it's more powerful sibling, you know what I mean? Um, everything with this racket is more. So you're gonna get more pop, you're gonna get more spin, you're gonna get more power, and it's because of the head size, the thickness of the beam, and also it's more of an open string pattern. Um, also the head CPI skill is Oh, you, maybe you guys can correct me if I'm wrong here, but it is a little bit higher than the Extreme Tour. But yeah, this thing is just more. So I really think this racket, to be honest, is for people that are in that pure arrow, pure drive, like head rackets, um, and don't want to go all bablot crazy. Um, this is definitely one that's very user friendly, especially at the intermediate level. I'm sure you could get away with playing with this racket though at a higher level if you were gonna tinker with it and customize it. But I really think this is a great, great intermediate racket uh, for players to kinda get some good pop and spin out of. But what did I think of it? If we go to the back forehands, um, this ball's flying off the racket. Man, it's got a lot of great pop. 
Um, really, the complaint that I would have is that it, it's too much. It reminds me of, you know, a Pure Arrow, my old Pure Arrow tour for my loyal subs. You guys know I used to use uh, Pure Arrow tour. It really reminded me of that. Um, there was just times that I, I couldn't control it. And throughout this review, I'm going to pick it apart a bit. Um, it's not a bad racket at all. It's actually a great racket for a lot of people, but it's just not for me. Uh, I just found it was on the forehand especially here, what we're talking about right now, it's just too much pop, too much spin. I just, I couldn't handle it almost. Uh, but if you're somebody that needs that pop, so somebody that's, you know, a 4.0, a 4.5, um, you know, a junior player, um, somebody that just has a hard time generating power themselves, this is a good one. So, I mean, yeah, so that's kind of the story of the forehand, uh, just overall, a lot of power, uh, which is not a bad thing. Um, you could definitely probably change that if you wanted more power go for a hybrid setup um, of course this is a pretty controlled setup what i have in here head hop power is very much like alu power from what i've heard too as well so it doesn't get any more controlled for the strings but you can definitely add some more power if you want some more with a hybrid or uh, a polyester that's going to give you some more power so that's forehand if we go to the backhand side things were starting to get a little instable here um i just think it's the weight of the racket it's very light it, it feels light in my hands and that's why i do think it's a great racket for the intermediate um player i did add weight to this racket though just to see how it would react i added about nine centimeters here nine centimeters here and then kind of distributed it here at the three and the nine to try and help with the stability um, it did help a little bit However, you guys know with adding weight, um, you know, it's going to give you a little bit more power at times. And that's what happened to this racket again. I got more power out of the weight. Um, and I didn't need any more power than I was already getting, uh, especially since this is already very powerful. So it did stabilize it, but it did make more power when I didn't need it. Um, so that was something to think about. So be careful if you're going to add weight to this one, know what you're doing with it. But yeah, back in overall just felt a little bit not as stable as I would like, even with a little bit of the weight. Um, backhand slice though was very nice. There's something with the extreme line. Um, it's close. It's close to my heart or something. I don't, I don't know. Like with the extreme tour, love it on my slice. This felt pretty smooth on slice. I mean, it didn't feel as good as my Extreme Tour, but I definitely could feel like it had properties of that racket. So I like it on the slice. At net, we're gonna move up now. It, it was actually pretty stable for a light racket, I thought. So when I did test its stock, um, it, su it surprised me a bit, actually. I didn't have all the feeling in the world, but I was definitely like the plow in the volleys, like it was, it, it was nice, like I didn't mind it at all at the net. Um, I do feel like though, if I was playing doubles in a big match and somebody's gonna rip it down the line at me, I don't know how the racket would perform at a ball coming at me like 100 miles an hour. That's where we would need some, some weight distributed, but then we had the problem with more power and I don't need that. So overall in the volleys, I thought it was pretty good. I know we've been giving it letter grades on the channel. So I would say the volleys are, a, a, a good solid B plus or A minus, so definitely solid on the volleys. Overheads, very nice. I feel like when I'm demoing rackets, overheads are the one place when demoing a racket I never have issues with. Um, it was great on the overheads, no problems at all. I don't know if that's because I have a good motion or anything, but no problems on the overheads at all. Really loved it, got a lot of pop out of it. And this is the sad part of the review coming up. The camera did die on serve and return, so I don't have footage for you for that, but I can definitely tell you about uh, what I felt on the serve and return. Once again, a lot of power in this racket. Uh, I did have a hard time controlling it on the serve, so that meant you know, hitting my spots was a little bit difficult at times. However, when it was landing in, I'll tell you this flat serve was a bomb. So. If you, like I said, are an intermediate player and you want to get some extra pop on your serve or extra pop on your shots, this is going to be a good one. Um, you're able to hit all the spins with this as well. This is actually, 
if you're able to, to, to have a good feeling with this and you do like it, I think you'll like it on your kick serve and your slice serve because after all, it is a spin beast. Uh, it is an extreme MP racket that we are talking about here. So serves were, were good, but similar to all the other things, just not good for me. Um, and on the returns, very similar uh, issues that I had on the backhand, just a little unstable just because of the weight. Um, and that was both, you know, for the forehand and the backhand. But overall, um, I'm happy I did play test this though, because it's interesting to play with other rackets that are in a line that, you know, you currently use. And uh, I know people that use this racket really love it. And I, I, I can see why they love it because of all the amazing things that it would do for that certain level. So I really do think this is a probably one of, if not the best racket for intermediate player seeking power spin um, and you know just good playability. This is a great frame. Racket review time and we have the Head Radical MP. All right. Now, shout out to Charlie in the comments. He said, demo this racket. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna demo this racket. I think he could be right. It might be what I'm looking for to give you guys a little bit of a back story. I demoed the Radical Pro and it was just missing a little bit of power. It was missing a little bit of, just a tiny bit of some spice that I was looking for on the groundies and when defending I felt like I needed a little bit more from the racket, a little bit more give. So he said, demo the MP. And he was right, this racket does give a little bit more juice. Um, so we're gonna get into that today. This is the Head Radical MP, ladies and gentlemen. So let's get into it. So the Head Radical MP, what did I think of it? It's the same paint job as the Pro, so no complaints there. But yeah, let's really get into it. From the back, right away, I noticed that it did have a little bit more power, a little bit more uh, give, and a little bit more uh, of a launch angle, a little bit higher of a launch angle, and that's exactly what I was looking for. And I kinda, kind of loved this racket. I really did, it was really good. Um, and we'll get into what's happening with my racket switching and all that stuff later. But let's talk about it for now. From the forehand side, <clears throat> much better. Much better than the Pro. Felt pretty good. Um, I felt like it was, I kind of felt like I couldn't miss with this racket. I still did feel like the launch angle on the forehand side was still a tiny bit low. So at times I did feel like I, w I wasn't missing in the net. I just felt like the lower launch angle was causing the ball to drop a little short. Same issue that I had with the Radical Pro, but just not as, it wasn't nearly as pronounced or as bad as it was on the Radical Pro. But I still felt like it was a tiny bit short sometimes, but it was going in a lot. So I kind of kept telling myself, hey, look, you're making a lot more balls. They just might be a little bit shorter. So I mean, that was on the forehand side. It, it was really good, don't get me wrong. I would give it like an A, A minus, um, because with my like extreme tour, I'm getting a lot of pop, I'm getting some spin, it's kicking on the person. So if it's short, it still has some, some revolutions on it. So it's still kind of coming at the person. So I did feel like I was missing a little bit of some juice there. I did add some weight at three and nine and did, uh, uh, counter it down here in the grip so that is something that definitely helped a little bit stock you need to add weight to this racket for it to perform how you want if we go into the back inside hitting flat back ends just with this racket chef's kiss uh, I love just smacking it on the back end it was really nice it felt like it was going in all the time um, but yeah, I mean, no complaints. I, I would probably give this an A or an A plus in the backhand. And yeah, no really complaints at all. Uh, it felt really solid at contact. Um, there is one thing on the ground strokes though that I'll say for when I, I'm done talking about slices that I did not like. 
and it's weird because the pro didn't do this. Um, but to get the slices, like we'll go to now, um, it felt a little weird sometimes. Like I would go for a slice and it felt like I didn't have as much feel as I did when I was hitting with the, the Radical Pro or my Extreme Tour or even some other rackets I've demoed in the past. Um, it felt like I wasn't necessarily connected as long as I was hoping for, which kind of leads me to my next point. If we have to give a grade though to the slice, I would say B plus. But for ground strokes overall, even when I added lead, it felt like the ball was like holding on the string bed for a very long time. So it was a very odd sensation because I've never felt this with a racket. So I would swing, and it felt like the ball, like you could feel it go back in the string bed and then launch forward. And this made me kind of have a little bit of confidence issues when swinging out because I would swing out and I wouldn't know how much to swing because like I said, I was having a little bit of issues when, uh, when the ball was, I had issues when the ball was landing short. I felt like I was hitting short a little bit. But then sometimes I would go for a big swing and it felt like the ball like exploded off the racket and I couldn't actually control it. Now this is when I did have lead on the racket as well, but I couldn't play myself with its stock form either. So I needed to find a way there. Um, but I really had a hard time controlling the string bed. Like I felt like it was coming out very fast and like it was like a trampoline effect. And I strung the racket at 54 and 52, so this is not a loose tension really, it's just pretty average. Uh, with Slinko Confidential, I've never had this issue with any other rackets. So it was very strange. Um, that's something I would knock about this racket and I really, I really did like it. So we'll, we'll continue on, but we'll come back to it. Up at the net, quite solid. There is something else that I'm not really a fan of, is these power sound grommets. It makes this pinging noise and I didn't even really notice it as much with the Radical Pro. Um, you could really hear the ball pop off of it for sure, but it makes like a pingy noise, so I'm not really a fan of that. The volleys, it was solid, especially with the lead. No issues whatsoever, I'd give it like, you know, A. Same on overheads, A. Can't miss an overhead, really. Um, like I said in one of my last reviews, I feel like when you're demoing a racket for overhead, like it's just, it's either good or bad and it just seems like they're always good because I feel like overheads you either can hit an overhead or you can't and I'm at the level where I can hit an overhead so it felt good. <laughs> so volleys and overheads, A, serve, I was able to hit my spots very well. On the kick serve and the slice serve, uh, didn't get as much uh, spin but was able to still hit the spots so very nice there. Return was also very solid, just that problem though with the string bed. Um, I felt like I couldn't, it was landing in, but I didn't, I didn't have the feeling since it was, it was the trampoline effect um, for me. And I don't know if other people have had this issue, but this is something that I noticed. Um, it just felt like it was staying on the string bed long. And um, I'm somebody that has played with Babolats. Um, you know, I use my Extreme Tour. I don't know if, if those rackets are, are, different like if they don't stay on the string bed as long uh, which is very strange it's very strange because I played with the Radical Pro and it was it was it was good and I didn't I didn't feel that sensation uh, the balls were landing a lot shorter but I just I didn't have that sensation so this racket though it's actually really good I'm docking it right now I almost switched to this racket um, so I'm not switching to this racket I'm so happy I demoed it though because it's very, very solid. I was debating on playing with it in one of our matches actually to really test it because I was so close to switching. Um, but these little nitpicky things that I'm talking about like the, 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 the string bed issue that I felt and the pingy noise, I'm sorry, but if I'm switching to a racket, all that, it's gotta be perfect. I'm not gonna switch to a racket, but it's not perfect for me. And I know you guys understand that because if you want to switch to your racket, it better be darn good. So there's just a couple things here that I didn't really enjoy. The sound that it gave me and the feeling off of the string bed, which I keep coming back to. But overall, this is a great racket. 
Uh, you guys were right in the comments that told me that this is a good one, especially when customized with lead and with a poly setup, I think. I don't know how this would perform with a, with a hybrid because I feel like you would need to add even a little bit more weight since the hybrid makes the, the racket lighter. But man, oh man, uh, Head Radical MP, definitely a good stick. Uh, if you want a tiny bit more of a launch angle, height-wise, I mean, and a tiny bit more depth of shot with a ton of control, you're coming from a 98 square inch racket, could be an extreme tour, you're looking for something there, you have to demo this one. It's a great racket to try. It just didn't seal the deal for me. Um, it was very close, but just a couple of little things that I didn't quite love. All right, guys, there you have it. We have just gone over the Speed MP, uh, Radical MP, Extreme MP, and Gravity MP. Hopefully this uh, kind of compilation review helped you guys choose your new racket. Uh, you know, every racket has their pros and cons. Some have a lot of power and spin. Some are more control and stable, and others are a little bit of a blend of that. So you kind of need to be able to find which one is best for you, and I hope I was able to provide you guys that today. Also, as you guys know, I recently came to an end on my racket journey. I'm now using the Head Radical Pro with some customization. So hopefully this video was very helpful for you guys to hopefully get to or have a good idea of what racket you maybe want to switch to or maybe go in that direction. So that's going to be it for today, guys. Thank you for stopping by and we'll catch you guys in the next video.